Well, cool. Uh, my name is Michael O'Brien. I'm the sales director at A&R Solar, and I'm delighted to have one of our customers from 2017 and onward, Tom Kegaris here today. And we're going to ask him a few questions about his technology life, uh, his interaction with solar and batteries, and, and it's great to have you here today, Tom. Yeah, thanks, Michael. It's great to be here. Thanks, man. So yeah, just to start off, tell us about yourself. Where do you hail from, and you know what's been keeping you busy in the last last few months? Yeah, so my name's Tom Kegaris. Uh, I'm an IT manager at Amazon. Uh, I've been working uh, both in the Amazon fulfillment space, working in the warehouses, supporting IT there since 2015, and for the past year or so, I've been up in the Seattle area supporting uh, IT for the Amazonians who work in Seattle and Bellevue. Um, I've always been in technology. It's sort of been my thing even since I was a little kid. I've been working in the technology industry since I was in high school. Started off doing a phone-based tech support for old dial-up ISPs back when we still had those. Uh, but I've, I've been in the field the entire time. It's something that yeah, I'm personally passionate about. I keep up on personally. You probably see behind me, I have uh, a desktop PC, numerous computers around uh, my house, and I sort of pride myself on keeping up on, on the latest and greatest technology. Something that has really uh, benefited me as I've gone into um, solar and battery backups and the EV space as well. I have a couple of Teslas and um, I really see that as the future and, and I wanna be part of it as quickly as I can. So really been enjoying that. Awesome, thank you. So given your work and how steeped you are in technology, how do you evaluate you know, technology selections in your own personal life? I really look at things that that solve problems for me um, or potential problems. And, and that really dovetails well with how I first started looking into solar. Um, you know, I, I look at things from a security perspective, both information security and physical security. Um, you know, even prior to 2020, when we're all working from home, uh, I work from home on occasion. And so I was looking into a lot of what if scenarios. Um, and I do that a lot with technology as well. Um, I like to see things that work seamlessly with a minimum of user interaction. Um, things that, you know, candidly, if, if the rest of my family, my wife, um, you know, my parents can use technology well, I find solutions for them. My friends come to me on a regular basis as something of a subject matter expert. You know, what's, what's the best home security camera? What's the best Wi-Fi router? Uh, and so I, I, I go through technology fairly consistently, um, finding things that work well and settling on good solutions that work well for me. And then I can use that knowledge to help others. Perfect. Thank you. So heading over to solar for a moment, why did you first consider solar? Uh, honestly, it came down to a couple things for me. One was being interested in technology as it had matured. Uh, you know, solar as it was 30 years ago is, is a different animal than what it is today. Um, part of it was in terms of utility cost, you know, a financial consideration. Uh, I knew that there were incentives at the time. Um, when I was looking to solar originally, we were still in the 30% federal tax credit and the Washington state production incentives. Uh, and that made a lot of sense for me. So I started looking for an installer. I wanted to go with somebody locally. Um, I feel like local companies tend to be more responsive, better customer experience, which is really important to me. Um, and I had, uh, I found a &R online and had them come out and do, uh, you know, an evaluation of our house and, and gave us a lot of great information. You know, this is the size of array that you can have. Here's based on your util utility bills. Here's how much we think it's gonna cover in terms of your utility costs. Um, but looking at the return on investment over a couple of years, it, it made a lot of sense. Uh, you know, great partnership with uh, Puget Sound Cooperative Credit Union, being able to do a, a pretty low interest loan for um, for the entire installation, which just made a lot of sense. Uh, in the end, you know, looking strictly at the financials, uh, it, it basically was what I was spending on my uh, utility bill was essentially what I would be paying for the solar. And then knowing that once that was paid off, you know, I would essentially be getting, you know, essentially free power at that point, um, plus all the incentives. So it made a lot of sense um, for us. And um, just going through that process started me thinking about the whole backup solution for power and, and that type of thing. Yeah, let's get into the backup of, uh, solution that you ended up selecting. Before you do, do you think today, given there is no Washington State production incentive, would you have done the same analysis or come to the same conclusion, or would you 
refer people to solar in the same way? I, I definitely would, and I have. Um, the way I look at it is particularly, you know, it feels like we've had warmer summers here the last couple months. If you have air conditioning, there's 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 two facets to that. One is if you have the air conditioning, it tends to be pretty expensive to run. Um, the first summer we moved into this house and we have a brand new house that was built in 2015, very efficient with very efficient air conditioning unit. And we were still looking at energy bills of, you know, potentially $300, $400 a month in the hottest parts of summer. Uh, so that that's a consideration on its own. And then, you know, there's folks who will kind of go out of their way not to get air conditioning uh, and have that comfort because of the cost. So when you look at the big picture and you think the solar is going to be able to cover uh, X percentage, hopefully close to 100 percent or more of your electric usage, uh, it starts to make more sense to either go out and get air conditioning at that point or to be able to be more comfortable running it and, and kind of increase your quality of life because it's not such a purely financial consideration whether to run that air conditioner or not. Uh, so the financials have changed a bit with the incentives from Washington being different now, but you're not paying sales tax. That does cover some of that as well. Um, and I do think it still makes sense long-term. Uh, you just have to think about it more. What, what are my priorities? What problems am I trying to solve? Uh, and if you're in a position where you can capitalize on it well based on you know, your, your home and, and how much sunlight you get, I think it does make a lot of sense. Awesome. Thanks for that. Now let's, let's cut over to energy storage for a minute. Tell us a little bit about what utility you're in, a little bit about grid reliability and how you came to evaluate, you know, backup systems and what alternatives did you look at? Sure. So originally uh, I didn't have any backup solution even before solar. Uh, we live here in Kent, we don't have a lot of outages where we're at, uh, but we did have an outage the first winter we were here in this house uh, where we were out of power for probably about six hours. Um, not a hugely lengthy power outage, but enough that it started me thinking if I'm working from home, uh, we have a power outage, I'm not able to do my work. And so my initial solution was to buy a lot of desktop UPS systems. So the little battery backups you can get Office Depot or, or what have you. Uh, so when we do, did have minor outages, you'd hear a chorus of alarms going off across the entire house as uh, the UPSs were complaining about their loss of power. But what I found was those batteries don't last all that long if they're not used frequently with outages. Uh, they're just sitting there and then you find out that in, in an outage, certain things are backed up for a, a very short period of time. You can't put a, a high draw item like a refrigerator on that. And so it just was it was a kludgy solution that I didn't think was going to work long term. Um, our next uh, option was to look at a generator. Uh, when this neighborhood was built, we had uh, a set of neighbors across the street from us who got the builder to include a generator, natural gas generator. And during the outage, uh, we were really shocked about how loud it was. Um, and this is this is a new generator on a new house. It's not something, uh, and it's a, an in-place permanent installation. So not something that was old or in need of repair or anything, but it was extremely loud when it was running to the point where we could hear it very clearly inside our closed home when they're across the street. So that was a big drawback. Uh, my wife was really concerned about that. The other part was having to look for a general contractor, dig a trench three feet out from our gas line, uh, had to emplace it in our yard. And my wife was not a fan of that either. Um, she felt like that was gonna be too much work. Uh, that it would look good. Um, the way that our house is positioned, our side yard is very large where the generator would go, but it's sort of, even though with, we have a, a fence, it's sort of in view of the rest of the neighborhood. So we sort of decided that given the cost, given those considerations, that probably wasn't going to be the best solution for us. And so we started looking into battery backups. And this was about the same time that we were looking into solar. Uh, I came across the Tesla Powerwall solution. The Gen 2 Powerwall was coming out right about that same time. Uh, inquired about that when we did the solar installation. However, they weren't quite available yet. Um, there was a hurricane in Puerto Rico. I think we all remember that. Uh, and Tesla was really prioritizing those backup um, solutions for them to get their grid back online. Uh, and so we had to go without it for a little while. Uh, but when it did come available again, uh, it was the solution we chose as something that was going to be clean and a fairly easy installation that would have very little impact on us or the house, obviously quiet while it would run and we'd be able to back up the whole home seamlessly. Awesome, great, great run up to talking a little bit more about storage. So um, you have an interesting story to tell about your mom and some of the backup requirements she had. Tell, tell us what you did there. 
Sure. So she lives in a 55 plus community in Ording, also a new house um, that that we were able to get uh, for her. She moved in last year. Um, she had a lot of anxiety, has always had a lot of anxiety, anxiety about power outages, um, you know, have it losing the food in her fridge and so on. And it was always part of the plan that once the house was built, we were going to go with a solar installation with her and then we were going to get batteries. So this was the first time we were able to do both at the same time. And for her, it was it was partially uh, life safety for me, you know, having her heat be able to work, uh, having her air conditioner continue to be able to work if it's super hot outside, being able to keep her uh, refrigerator running and her freezer running. And then also more than anything else, just giving her the peace of mind that knowing that if there was an outage, she would be covered and continue to be able to operate. Um, also in ordering, there were there are a lot of power outages. She's had a significant number of them since the installation. And I get the alerts on my my Tesla app when she's lost power and she doesn't realize it. her entire house stays up and running. Um, and I will send her text and say, Hey, do you know you, your power's out? Oh no, I didn't realize. And then she'll find out from her neighbors. And, and these are usually a few minutes at a time. Uh, but here in uh, September, they had a very significant outage out in ordering. You know, we had a lot of uh, uh, storms and so on coming through a uh, lot of wind. So there were powder power outages all over the sound. Uh, if you were to look at the Puget Sound Energy outage map, I mean, they were everywhere. And so her power went out on September 7th uh, at about 9.43 p.m. I got the alert. Uh, she has security cameras all over her house, just like I do, which I have access to. Can, I can see remotely. I can see when her pair or her, I'm sorry, her neighbor's lights went out, um, but hers all stayed on. Uh, the only one in a very dark neighborhood uh, with all those lights out. Uh, and so her power stayed on and she had no idea, had no impact to her. Uh, unfortunately, Comcast doesn't have that kind of backup. So their equipment went down about two hours later and she lost internet access. Um, but she maintained power through the entire next 23 hours and 50 minutes of having no utility power. Uh, the only impact to her being that her internet was down and that was because of Comcast and not because of her power being out. Uh, so her neighbors didn't have any sort of backup solution. Uh, a couple of them went out and bought very long extension cords and plugged their freezers and refrigerators into her outlets. So she was able to help them. They're a very close knit community down there. Um, so that was great. And it was just a huge boon to her and really got some of her neighbors thinking themselves about, you know, in an extended power outage, what are we going to do? What kind of backup solution are we going to have? So it was, it was a godsend for her. It was a godsend for me knowing that she had power knowing that she could run her AC, that she could do laundry if she needed to, um, that all of those things were taken care of uh, and that she didn't have to worry about it. That's, that's a great story. Thank you for sharing that. Sure, absolutely. Just imagine the, the crisscrossing of the extension cords across the street. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. Well, cool. So yeah, t tell us a little bit about um, what was important to you in the selection of a solar and battery installer? What else did you see out there? What what gave you confidence? What didn't? I think the main thing was I had seen a couple of YouTube videos as as Tesla had acquired Solar City. There were a lot of people do it going that route. At the time, they were very backed up. Uh, it was months to get installations through them, so I, I I sort of immediately discounted them as an option. I was looking at uh, local companies and who was going to be closest, who had uh, the most compelling stories on their website, uh, who would be able to come out and give me the best information. And a &R really you know, took the cake in terms of being able to provide that information, uh, being very responsive. Uh, it immediately engendered a lot of trust with me that this is a group of subject matter experts who are in this for the long haul. Who are going to be responsive to my sort of unique needs as somebody who is very technical very interested in the process um, i can be a very specific kind of difficult customer on occasion because um, i'm going to ask a lot of questions and I, i'm going to insist on certain things that you know other customers may not and so through this process i think a and r and i both learned a couple of things um, as we were one of the early adopters of the the second generation powerwall um, but I, I went into it feeling that A&R was going to be very responsive and give me that great customer experience. And that was absolutely the case. And I don't define that great customer experience by a problem-free install, um, because I think anytime you're dealing with something relatively new or unique requirements, you may run into things you've never experienced before. And that was the case on both of the installs at my house and at my mother's house. 
and a and r worked with me hand in hand to find solutions and to address those things uh and so it's it's been a great partnership and i would absolutely be referring other people uh and i have done so um hopefully more people get on the bandwagon and uh it, it's just good for everybody not in terms of just the financials and having that great relationship but also good for the grid good for the environment planning at large um it's it's a net positive for everybody very good well, let's wrap it up and talk a little bit about the future what might you expect to evaluate in terms of technology purchases in the future or anything that might intersect with energy it doesn't matter what are you looking at well like i said i've i've only recently this year gotten electric vehicles so i have two evs i've got a tesla model 3 and a tesla model y i've been very happy with those very much following the ev trends and have been uh, recommending some to other friends uh, who've been in the market for them and, and been learning a lot about how having an EV changes uh, your life in terms of how you're driving, how you plan road trips. We just did an extensive road trip from here to Denver, Colorado and back. First time in an EV and it was a flawless experience I'm very happy with. Uh, in terms of, uh, you know, for the house, I'm really interested to see what may be happening with HVAC. Uh, nobody's really made a whole lot of changes in heating and air conditioning other than some efficiency improvements for as long as I've been alive, there are rumors that Tesla may get into the HVAC game and come up with something that's a, a much more efficient solution. I don't know what that might be, but different than what we have today, I would be interested in that. Uh, and interested in following solar technology. Uh, our panels, I think, are, are very efficient. They were you know, top of the line when we got them installed just a couple of years ago. Um, but with the draw of our EVs and some of the other things we've added to the house, we're not quite covering 100% of our usage. I would love to do that. It's kind of a psychological thing for me. So as that technology continues to improve and panel technology continues to improve, I'll be watching that. Uh, if we ever moved into a new house, especially if we're doing custom construction, absolutely look at something like the, the Tesla solar roof or something similar to that. Um, or even depending on where we live, maybe even a ground mount solution. Um, but all, all those things are interesting to me. Also be interested in, in more of the sustainable uh, questions about, you know, in, in a situation where maybe you lose access to water, maybe you lose access to natural gas, how can how can you be able to set up your home to be able to, su to sustain itself in perhaps a natural disaster situation? If we were to have uh, an earthquake or something like that, you know, how, how could we continue to move forward? Uh, I think one of the questions that we talked about earlier was, how did I get down this road to begin with? Uh, and in terms of disaster recovery, you know, we have satellite backup internet. In, in the case that our Comcast goes down here at our house, uh, also looking at you know Starlink and other new generation satellite internet technologies that will eventually replace um, the legacy satellite technology. So all those things are interesting to me, both from a disaster recovery perspective to a sustainability perspective. It'd be very interesting to see what comes out in the next few years.